Anybody ever have a stressful week? Hopefully this week wasn't stressful for you. But if it was, I imagine some of the stresses that may have come. Now, this is Youth Sabbath, for those of you who don't know. And uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit to the youth. And if you're 99 and feel youthful, that's okay. It's you too, okay? (laughs) But let's talk a little bit. What stresses you out? Well, if you're young, maybe you're still in school and uh, classes are stressing you a little bit. Or maybe there's some homework that is a little bit harder than you anticipated or you ran out of time to get it done, right? Um, maybe, maybe it's that uh, teacher just doesn't understand that weekends were not meant for studying, right? They were meant for enjoying time with friends, um, Maybe, maybe what's stressing you is that relationship, right? That uh, that young man hasn't asked you out yet, or that young lady won't accept to go out with you, right? Um, maybe, maybe it's a he said, she said problem going on in your life. We all know about those, right? Um, Maybe it's a mom and dad issue if you're, if you're one of our youth in the church. You know, parents, they just don't understand us young people now. Things were different when they were growing up, and they think they know have all the answers, but, you know, they don't understand us youth now. Yeah, I see a lot of young heads going up and down. Um, Uh, How about work issues for those of you who are a little bit older and you got into the workforce and, uh, you know, the supervisor just doesn't give you the shifts you need to make what you need to make. Or maybe the shifts they're giving you are not the shifts you really want to have. Or maybe you just don't get enough hours. Maybe you've asked for that raise and the boss said, not now, right? Right? Um, maybe that stress is uh, you're a little bit older and uh, you're starting to multiply yourself and you realize that that little tiny thing that you all of a sudden got didn't come out with an instructor's manual, right? And you're trying to figure out everything that child needs and, and uh, it can be stressful as they start getting older and older. You know, whatever stresses are going on in your life, in your career, in your studies, whatever stresses are going on, this morning I've got good news for you. Jesus has it. He's got it taken care of. Now, it's hard to see it sometimes. Would you agree? Sometimes we don't see that God can have it all taken care of. But we're going to look at a story in the Bible today that's going to help us understand the fact that before we need it, God has got things under control. That story was uh, started to be read by uh, Lena this morning in the book of Luke chapter 5. And it starts with Jesus trying to get some alone time. He's trying to get out into the nature next to the, the lake and spend some time with his heavenly father. But as soon as he gets there, the people find out, Jesus, G- G- Jesus is down by the lake. Let's go down there. I'm sure he'll teach us. He'll tell us some more. Let's go down there. And before you know it, he is crowded and pressed upon, it says, by the people. Verse 1 and 2 says, And it came to pass that as the people pressed about him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them, for they were washing their nets. Now those fishermen happened to be Peter, his brother Andrew, John and James, the sons of Zebedee, own the other one. Jesus takes a look and sees the empty boats. He feels the pressure of the people coming on him. He's about ready to get wet. 
because they keep crowding into him. Um, and he says, hey, he gets into one of the boats and says, can you push this out? Now, remember, Peter owned the boat that he says, push me out a bit. We're going to read a little bit later that Peter had been out fishing all night. Those of you who are still in school, maybe in college, you ever pulled an all-nighter trying to get ready for that test you forgot to study for, right? Trying to, trying to finish reading the book, the book report is due the next day. Yes, you've ever pulled those all-nighters. Um, uh, Peter had just pulled an all-nighter. He was out fishing all night. And he came back with nothing. Not one fish. Zippo. Nada. Now, this was his livelihood, right? He had been out all night fishing so that he could get fish to go to sell so that he could have some money to be able to survive, and he came back with nothing. No fish, no life for Peter. No fish, no money. Right? What's, what's he going to do? He was discouraged, I'm sure. Any of you be discouraged if you work for a month and then the, the person who was there said, sorry, I can't pay you. Be a little discouraged, wouldn't you? Probably so discouraged you would call somebody to help you with that situation, yeah? Um, but, but Peter had worked all night for nothing. Now their nets were dirty from the sludge in the bottom of the lake and trying to fish and they had some tears in them. Now they're trying to, to get their nets cleaned up and ready for maybe the next night. They're just out there just doing what fishermen do. Peter looks up and sees Jesus standing in his boat. What? <laughs> what are you doing? You know? Jesus says, can you just push me out a little bit? I'm going to sit here and I'm going to teach the people. Now, Peter, he was discouraged. He was probably a little stinky, been up all night, working, trying to fish, out there on the waters. He was mending his nets. He had lots to do. I'm sure listening to Jesus preach was the farthest thing from his mind at the moment. I've just been up all night. I am tired. I just need to finish this so I can go home and get some shut-eye, right? He had every excuse in the book he could have given Jesus at that moment. I don't have time. I know none of us have ever used that excuse, right? I don't have time for you right now, Jesus. Yeah? Um, I'm too tired. It's too late, right? I've got too much homework, yeah? Um, you know, uh, the guy finally asked me out, and he's almost going to be here to pick me up. I don't have time right now. <laughs> All kinds of excuses, but Peter didn't come up with any excuses. He said, sure, let me push it out a little bit for you. And then he got a row seat to probably one of the most amazing sermons he had ever heard in his life. Can you imagine? Spirit of Prophecy tells us that during that time, he was teaching the people from nature all about God's love. Could you, wouldn't you just love to be a, you know, a little speck someplace listening to that kind of sermon? Coming from Jesus himself? Peter had been fishing all night, but I bet you he did not doze off one minute during that sermon, right? I'm sure he was just glued to Jesus' every word. When Jesus was all finished, he said, Peter, can you just go ahead? Let's push us out into the deep. Put your nets back out there. Now, Peter, his profession was a fisherman. Now, do fishermen know when to fish and when not to fish? Yeah. Now, again, Peter could have come up with a long list of excuses. And, you know, Jesus, I'm the professional here. 
You know nothing about fishing, okay? I'm the fisherman, and this is not the time to fish. The fish will not be caught during the day. You got to go at night to fish, right? Jesus, I just fished all night, he says, and I didn't catch one fish. Jesus, I'm too tired. I've been up all night. I just listened to you preach an hour sermon, and now... He didn't use any of those excuses, right? He threw all the excuses out the window. He said, okay, Jesus, I've been out there all night. I didn't catch anything. But just because you told me to, how many of you have ever thought about that for a second? Just because Jesus says this is a good thing, it's a good thing. Just because Jesus says, go here and do this, we should do it. That's it. Yeah? He said, I know, I, I know fishing. I fished all night. I didn't catch anything. But because you told me to, I'll go ahead and go. So he pushes out. Yeah, it starts going out into the deep. Can you imagine James and John? <laughs> What does he think he's doing? <laughs> he's looking at James. John. Peter can't catch nothing now. What, what, why is he going out there? Man, he's lost it. Right? However, it wasn't long before James and John sees Peter trying to get their attention. Get out here! James and John goes out there trying to figure out what Peter's up to and realize, wow. You see, when they let down the net, when Jesus was in the boat, it got Filled so full that they couldn't put it all in one boat. It was breaking the nets. They brought out their friends and they filled up two boats. So full that the Bible tells us that the boats were almost sinking. They had so many fish. What made the difference? What made the difference? They toiled all night long and caught nothing. Now they go out, they put the nets down one time, and they bring in so many fish that they fill up two boats. What made the difference? I'd like to tell you this morning it was who was in the boat. When they took Jesus with them in the boat, what a difference it made. You see, that boat represents Peter's livelihood. Yes? Everything he was about centered around that boat. I imagine he saved quite a while to be able to buy that boat. I'm sure he had to work on other people's boats for a while before he earned enough to have his own. His life was fishing. And it wasn't until he invited Jesus into his life that he realized what fishing was all about, right? He realized life had so much more, so much more to offer. How many of you, and I know the answer to this, because you told me at the last few, the two times I preached, you're looking for more. Don't we want more? More comes when Jesus comes into our boat, yes? When Jesus is in the boat, there's a song that says, what can we do? We can smile at the storm. Yeah? The things that are stressing us out. When Jesus gets in the boat with us, we can smile about them. Yeah? We can say, it's okay. Because Jesus has got my back. He'll take care of me. Now, They, uh, they were out there bringing in everything. The more fish they brought into the boat, the bigger their eyes got. 
right? How could this be possible? Nobody fishes in the daytime and gets this kind of catch, right? This is impossible. But with Jesus in the boat, is anything impossible? No, nothing's impossible when he's with us. Having Jesus in the boat changed everything for Peter. And not just Peter. It changed everything for Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Right? It changed everything for them. Because once they realized what Jesus was able to do, they were able to, he was able to provide this catch. There's, there's this thought process that went through Peter's mind. That thought process was, wow, who am I compared to him? Right? His thought process was, he, in, in fact, let's go to the scripture and read it. Let's, let's open up our Bibles to the, to the book of Luke. And those of you who don't have your Bibles, you can find it faster than me by pushing the buttons on your phone um, and getting to the book of Luke, chapter 5. And uh, let's, let's read it. And it says, in starting in verse, uh, in verse 8, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at the knee, at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. In verse 9, it continues, For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid, for now you will catch, what? Men. Men. I know we have some amazing professionals in our congregation this morning. We've got accountants. We've got doctors. We've got you know, um, you know, professors, uh, we have all kinds of professions represented here. But when Jesus goes to work with you, things change. Yeah? When Jesus goes to work with you, you realize how awesome he is and how, yes, we are still just men and women in his care. Is that right? The beauty of it is that we are men and women in his care. Him taking care of us. Now, he, uh, he tells them, you know, they're so amazed in, at, at the awesomeness of God. And he says, look it. Don't be amazed at this. You're amazed because you just caught a bunch of fish, right? Think about it. Jesus made the fish initially, right? He's the one that said, let the sea spring forth with fish and all kinds of, right? Animals in the, in the water on, on, in, in creation. Yes? Is he able to call them to come jump in a net? Obviously, he is. He knew exactly what they needed. But when they got what they needed, guess what they realized? They didn't need it so bad. They didn't need it so bad. If you, if you keep reading, it says that, uh, that they forsook everything and went and followed Jesus. They just caught the catch of their life. And they walked away from it all to follow Jesus. 
realizing that Jesus was the reason they caught everything in the first place. Realizing that Jesus represented everything to them and that he could take care of their every need. They did not have to rely on their boat, on their nets, on their knowledge. They didn't have to rely on, on themselves. They decided to put everything in Jesus' hands. Can you do that this morning? Can we decide to give everything to Jesus? To love him so much that we submit everything to him? Our work, our future, our school, our studying time, our boyfriends, girlfriends that are or not. <laughs> if we just submit it all to him, can he take care of it? Turn into your Bibles, if you would, to one more text. It's found in Psalms. The book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 91. Psalms chapter 91, it's an amazing chapter. I encourage you to read the whole thing. But today, we're only going to read the last three verses. Psalms 91, starting at verse 14. Starting at verse 14. And it says, Because... He has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him high because he has known my name. He shall cast upon me and I will answer, or call upon me and I will answer. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Can you imagine? When we put our trust and our love in God, he says, I'm going to give you everything you need. He didn't say, I'm going to give you everything you want. <laughs> right? My mom didn't always give me what I wanted because she knew that uh, the candy I wanted wasn't the best for me sometimes, right? And so it wasn't everything I wanted, but I did get everything I needed. Yes, Jesus provides everything you need. But when you have trials, when you have stress, when you are just burdened with life, right? When things are just piling up at work, when things at home are not going well and you, you can't figure it out, when, when things at school almost are overwhelming, you say, I just, I got to drop out. I can't do this. Stop. Take a step back. And give all of that mess to Jesus. Yeah? Because Jesus is there to get into your boat also. He's there to jump in your boat so that you can be able to experience what Peter experienced that day out on the lake. The abundance of Jesus Christ. He's ready to do that for you today. He's ready, but he's waiting for you to give everything to him. Peter gave everything to Jesus. He first gave him his nets. He first gave him his boat and then his nets. He gave Jesus his time. And then he gave everything to Jesus. Because that's the only answer he had. He gave everything to Jesus. If you are stressed today, I encourage to give all those stresses to Jesus. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we want to give everything to you. We want to give you our jobs. We want to give you our classes. We want to give you our stress. We want to give all of our problems to you. 
so that you can handle them. Give us the peace that comes when we're willing to do that. Come, get in our boats. Be with us. Let us experience how awesome you are. Because when that happens, you will make us fishers of men. We pray that you will just totally teach us how to rely 100% on your awesomeness. Take our pain, take our sorrows, turn it into joy in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray this in his name. Amen.